Good morning, my name's Tom Finney and this morning you join me at Manor Farm Fishing Lakes near Biggles Wade. Today we're fishing on the Damsel Lake, which is a lake that's got a really good head of big carp. There's, I've had, there's fish to well over 30 pounds in here. I've had fish to over 30. There's lots of mid to upper 20s. And today we're gonna be fishing for them off the top. It's already really, really hot. I've got my sun cream on. I've seen fish cruising around as we've been setting up. And what we're gonna to hope to do today is show you a couple of methods that I've caught some really good carp on, on here and on lakes similar to this. And I'm gonna show you one surface method that gives me a real, real edge when it comes to fishing these types of venues. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get set up. I'm gonna show you a couple tactics I use and then hopefully we're gonna catch some big carp. All right, so the first method I'm gonna show you, it's probably a method you'd already be familiar with if you've done any floater fishing before, and that is fishing the controller float. So today I've got a bubble float rigged up. Um, I like a bubble float. This one you can fill up with water. It's, bolts, it, it's bolt rig style. Um, there's many different varieties of this on the market, but I've got a preference for these ones. To that, I have about five foot of nine pound hook link. It's a floating hook link, which I've got um, connected to a size eight mixer hook, and I've got an artificial mixer. I've also got a little sight indicator on that mixer for if I want to watch the mixer and strike, I can see when the carp have taken that amongst all the other mixers on the water. You can also leave this rod on the ground and just let fish hook themselves, but you do get a much better hookup rate if you strike. Um, to fish this, I'm using a dedicated floater fishing rod. This here is the Witchwood FLTR. It's a 10 foot model. There's also a 12 foot model in the range. Um, I've got a riot reel, 12 pound main line. And yeah, what I like about this rod is it's got a nice sort of forgiving through action which means I can fish lighter hook lengths without being broken off and also smaller hooks and without really getting hook pulls. There's not that much weed in this lake at the moment, that's why I can get away with nine pounds, but if I'm fishing weedier waters, I will obviously step this up. So that's my first method. It's caught me lots of fish in the past. It's really good, especially if the fish are at range, but I've got a method that's actually caught me even more carp on venues that allow it, and I'm gonna show you that method next. So the second method I'm going to talk about, this is a proper alternative method for catching carp on the top. It's using a fly rod. So literally this here, I can't tell you the amount of big carp I've had on this method. Um, brilliant for when the carp are sort of within 20 yards of you. If you've got, if you've got a lake that's quite open so you can cast, um, th this method here can really, really give you an advantage. The reason being is you can actually select your carp and you can cast accurately two fish with this method with minimal disturbance. You can lift the line off a fish and put it on another fish. You just can't do that with a controller float. Um, it's a method that really, really gives you the edge. So on here, I've just got an artificial fly. Um, this is a fly that is tied to um, represent a biscuit. It's not purest fly fishing. I'm gonna be putting floaters out. Um, so it's sort of more fly rodding really, but there's no doubt it catches a lot of fish. So yeah, if you have a venue around you that allows fly fishing for carp, literally, give this method a go, you'll be surprised. Setup's quite simple. Um, I've got a seven weight fly rod. I think this is a nine foot six, seven weight. This is one of our new flows. Uh, got a matching reel. I've got 100 yards of backing. You need to make sure you've got some back enough backing on there for a carp. My leader, so this is where this is a bit different. So I've got about seven or eight feet of a copolymer line. So this is, um, which would silk zone, silk mode, which um, sort of sits high in the water, almost floats. But I want the bit right by where the fly is, just to sink, just not to, you know, just so the fish can't see it. So connected to that, I've got around two foot of nine pound ghost mode fluorocarbon tied together with a full turn water nut. And yeah, so we'll sort of 
wrap it up there, we'll get fishing, and hopefully I can show you a few fish on both these methods. So we're ready to start fishing. Um, I have a bucket of floaters here. I've just got a mix. I've got a couple different varieties just so the fish don't get locked onto a particular pattern. I think I've got some mixes and I've got some oily floaters. Um, to give these a boost, I'm putting some oil on them. This is a halibut oil. Um, you use all sorts of oils. And um, what that mainly is for is if I get a bit of a ripple, this will create a nice slick in a flat spot on the water. So good edge for when you float a fishing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna catapult a few out. On some venues, you would catapult bait out, leave it, wait for the fish to start competing and then cast. Um, on here, you don't seem to get the fish competing. They tend to come past, eat a few and move on. You sometimes find that on waters with bigger fish. Um, so what I'm gonna do is pull some out. I'm gonna start with a fly rod, which is gonna be very subtle and literally as soon as I see a few fish take the mixers, I'm gonna fire a fly straight at them. Um, if they get competing a bit later on and if they move out a bit further, I'll get the controller float out on them. So I'm gonna start putting some bait in and start fishing. Right, so we've been fishing a few hours. Um, we've had to move swings a couple of times because the birds have got us marked. Um, missed a few fish early on, made a few moves, um, spotted this lovely common under the trees, overhanging tree, pitched a fly to it, and it's taken it right down. And we've got our first carp of the day. And it has gone 22 pounds and 15 ounces. It's a little bit lively full of energy. Yeah. We sh were struggling a bit with the controller float today because of the birds and we couldn't really get much bait out, but didn't even have any bait out for this fish. Just pitching a fly on its nose, it's come up and it's taken it. We'll get this fish back and see if we can get a few more. Right, so we just moved swim quickly. Um, the geese sort of chased us out of the last one. Um, we've come into the swim and I've seen a decent fish cruising, just dropped the stuff, got the fly rod, covered the fish and it's come up and taken the fly. And the result is the biggest fish of the day so far. 25 pound, two ounces. Freshly spawned out. I reckon probably a few months ago, this would have been a 30, but awesome fish and it just proves how effective the fly rod is we didn't even get the chance to set up the cameras on the tripods there we were in the swim 30 seconds and i was playing this fish you've got to give fly fishing for carp a go no bait whatsoever out in the swim just covering a cruising fish it's been impossible to put any bait out today um so yeah we'll get this fish back and see if we can get another right we're finally in again 
This one's gone off like an absolute rocket. So it's been a little bit challenging today with the birds. Um, we've pretty much given up on trying to catch them on the controller float, given up on baiting. Any bait we put in, the birds have come. So I'm still fishing like a, a sort of slightly subsurface fly, but it could represent anything, could represent a beetle or something like that. And um, I've just seen a couple of carp cruise out from under this bush next to me. And I've put this on the head and one's just come up and absolutely wolfed it down and it's gone off like a rocket. So, as you can see, it's not, it's not been easy, but I think if I didn't have the fly rod here and I just had the floater rod today, I don't think I'd have caught a fish. Not quite sure the size of this fish. I did hook it, but water's a bit murky at the moment, so they can be quite deceiving. Just keep them away from those reeds there. He's in the reeds. Don't think he's as big as the last one, but I reckon it's still a good double. Look at that one. It's another smaller common just there. I think this might be a smaller fish just by the way it's fighting. It's holding, holding deep a little bit. Um, yeah. I'm still seeing, I've seen a few fish come up since I've been playing this in this corner and there's wind blowing right into it and there's lots of floating matter on the surface. Might be a hatch going on. Um, I, I've, seen, I've seen fish definitely feeding on the surface and I've not put, I've not put bait out for quite a long time now. Um, you know, if we put any bait out, you'd soon know about it with the geese. But yeah. It's definitely worth looking into if you've got a fishery that allows trying, you know, using a fly rod for carp. It is so effective on its day. And yeah, he's just absolutely giving it the beans at the moment. Yeah, it's quite important to use balanced tackle. Like this, this size fly rod here, it's seven weight. It's the same size I'd use for trouts, um, but it's got plen plenty, of, plenty of power in the butt nice forgiving sort of action in the midsection so i'm on sort of 10 pound 10 pound leader to a, to a short piece of nine pound fluoro whoops that was an accident there and it's holding it's holding really really well just this fish is just really hugging the bottom here don't think i've ever had a carp fight like this literally had fish off boats like pike and stuff just hugging the bottom but every time i get his head up i see its tail and it just goes straight down well it's wrapped around the it's wrapped around the pecs there we go it's unwrapped i reckon it's been wrapped around there the whole time so it doesn't look as big as, oh suddenly i can control it a bit better now That probably explain why it sort of just hugged the bottom like that. I don't think it's as big as I thought it was. It's definitely a common, but it's, you know, it's still a decent fish. I'm definitely going to need a bottle of water after this fish. It's proper hot today, so we brought several litres. It's really important to keep hydrated on these hot summer days. I'd, I'd like to say I'm going to have it in the net soon, but I just can't tell you because now it's just, as you can see there, it's just deciding to go off on another run. <laughs> it doesn't look like too wide. It's, it's one of those, like, if it's skinny and, and recently spawned out, it could be 15 pound. If it's got any belly to it, it could be 25 pounds. It's one of them. It's quite quite exciting, really. <laughs> it's definitely a fish you don't want to lose because you never know. Right, he's definitely an old older looking common. 
nice dark back on it. It did have a big old mouth when it come up and took the fly. You know, it was, I've missed a, I've missed a few fish today, but I was not missing this one. It's not really made any runs after that initial one. It's not trying to really go back for the tree, which I hooked it in front of. It's just, just been relentless under the rod tip. There we go, that's, oh, okay. Nearly. Some, some fish just do not want to be landed. I think this is one of them. I think even on a carp rod, I'd be playing this one for a while. It's got to be ready now. Oh. And there it is in the net. Finally. It's been a long battle, it's not, it's at least a good double, but yeah, what we'll do is we'll get this fish unhooked and we'll show it to you soon. Right, so after a long quiet period, we finally got another one. This one's just gone over 20 pounds, um, I think it was 20 pounds in four ounces. It, it fought like an absolute demon lovely common i think it's just recently spawned out it's just had so much energy so um today really really proved the versatility of the fly rod um like the geese made it impossible to feed anything so eventually we weren't putting any food out this one was mooching around over some overhanging trees um just chucked the chucked the fly over it come in gulped it down the fly rods allowed us today to like select our fish lift lift the fly line off the off the fish um, constantly cover fish and um, it's worked i think if we'd just been on the controller float today i don't think we'd have caught so it's a bit of an alternative method but it is really really devastating on its day so i urge you to give fly fishing a go for carp if you get a venue that allows it so thank you for watching the video be sure to subscribe to Witchwood Fishing TV and I'll see you on the next one.